if you're not using ChatGPT yet to learn foreign languages, you're missing out on so many things, believe me. But good thing you clicked on this video, because today I will share with you all the sneaky ChatGPT prompts that are helping me reach fluency way faster than if I was just using conventional methods. The first prompt we'll be using today is asking ChatGPT to create a customized learning plan for us. From my experience with ChatGPT, it's important to be as precise as possible. So that's why I start almost every single prompt by saying that ChatGPT should act as a professional teacher with a lot of experience. I also always specify the accent I'm most interested in. So I don't just say, oh, teach me Spanish. I mean, there are so many different kinds of Spanish out there in the world. And I'm focused on Mexican Spanish because I live in Mexico City. And you can do the same thing for any language. If you're learning English, be specific. American English, British English, or maybe you live in Australia and you're only interested in Australian English. Then I make sure that I tell ChatGPT who I am, like I'm a complete beginner or maybe I'm an advanced student. Again, be specific. And most importantly, how much time can you dedicate to language learning? I said that I want to become fluent in Spanish in one year and I'm ready to dedicate one hour or two hours every single day to study the language. And if you use my prompt, this is probably what you're gonna see week by week. Remember that you can use it as a good starting point. It doesn't mean that it's the only truth or the only perfect plan out there. But still, if you don't have enough time and you need a plan, you can use this prompt. Prompt number two is connected to your schedule. I understand that lots of you guys are extremely busy. I'm busy too, like yes, I'm a content creator, but it's my job, it's my full-time job. I can't just be sitting and learning Spanish all day. No, it doesn't really work like that. So the second thing we wanna do is we wanna add ChatGPT to fit Spanish learning or language learning into our busy schedule. So I tell ChatGPT what my schedule looks like right now and when I can potentially study. Because I always say that when it comes to language learning, for me, it's important to time block. I just open my Google Calendar and I time block for the whole week or even a whole month if I know that my schedule stays the same. So as you can see with my schedule, I can only really study Spanish in the evening. And with ChatGPT, we have everything planned out. So right now, all I can do is just copy and paste everything into my Google Calendar and make sure my study sessions are planned. Using AI to improve your work, life, and language learning is extremely popular right now. And you can learn more about it on Skillshare from the comfort of your own home. Skillshare is the perfect place where you can get inspired, learn new skills, and put them to work in impactful ways. Skillshare is the largest online learning community. And there you can take classes on different topics from language learning, graphic design to photography, marketing, and productivity. Skillshare will help you move from beginner to pro and will give you all the tools and tips along the way. Let's say you're interested in productivity, so you can take a class called Notion Masterclass. Maximize your productivity and organization by Ali Abdal. I have taken this class before and I absolutely loved it. If you want to learn how to use ChatGPT for marketing and productivity, make sure to check out this class. If you want to start designing your first 3D objects, Skillshare has a class for you. And if you want to self-publish a picture book, Skillshare has you covered too. If you want to up-level your skills and give Skillshare a try too, make sure to use the link in the description. This link will give you one whole month complete for free on Skillshare. And the offer is only available to 500 people who click this link. Huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring a portion of this video. Now let's move on to the prompt with the most used words in your target language, Spanish, English, or any other language. So again, we use the same beginning, but now we ask ChatGPT to give us a list of 500 most used words in this language. An important note that I add is I add ChatGPT not to include prepositions, articles, numbers, pronouns, because I don't need all of that. I understand that people use those things a lot and I want actual words, you know, nouns, adjectives, adverbs, etc. I love that here ChatGPT gives us everything in thematic order. So if today I'm interested more in family and relationships, I can just memorize all of those words. It is commonly believed that 50% of all conversation in English is only made up of 100 most common words, and 80% of 
all the conversation in English is made up of around 3,000 most common words. So according to this, if you only learn 3,000 words, you'll be able to understand roughly 80% of all the conversations in your target language. And when I memorize new words in a foreign language, I always use Anki because I love their space repetition technology. It's something that helps me memorize new vocabulary a lot faster. And one tip that I've recently learned is when you try to memorize new vocabulary, try not to use translations. I know it's hard, but sometimes it's possible, especially if you're learning verbs and nouns and like especially nouns that represent objects, right? Let's say you want to learn the word knife in Spanish. So instead of having the picture of knife, the translation in English, just have the picture and the Spanish word cuchillo and that's it. I have heard some people say that this approach of using no translation helps them learn new vocabulary a lot faster and also use this vocabulary in conversations. And right now, I have started using this approach and I can say that at the beginning it felt a little bit weird because I'm so used to using translations all the time, but the more I use it, the more confident I feel because now when I see a picture on my Anki app, I immediately think about a Spanish word instead of thinking about its translation first. The next prompt that I often use is connected to asking ChatGPT to explain something and especially to explain the difference. Explain the difference between this word and that word because when you're just starting out learning a language, there are going to be lots of words that seem very similar to you. To me, at least that's the case right now in Spanish and I'm like, what's the difference? And ChatGPT helps me a lot here. Let's say you're reading an article in your target language and in this sentence you see a word you don't know, maybe it's connected to grammar, you just don't understand how, like why it's there, right? You want to understand this word in context and that's why you can use this ChatGPT prompt to understand all of this. I usually use this for grammar, again especially at the very beginning when you don't know a lot of grammar rules and if verbs change a lot, you just feel like, you know, you don't understand the meaning. Like for example, in English, why do we have to say have changed or will be changing or I don't know, have been changed, for example. If you have a sentence, you have the context, you can ask ChatGPT to explain like why this verb is like this in the sentence and maybe provide you more examples. The next prompt is funny because I like using it when I just want to have some fun and I want to improve my language feel, like how I feel the language. Basically, recently I learned a new word in Spanish, la morsa, which means a walrus, I guess, in English. And so I decided to ask ChatGPT to create a joke for me. I look at this joke and I try to understand it. If I laugh, success. If I don't laugh and I'm like, what, what is that? I have no idea what all of these words mean. Then it's a learning opportunity for me because oftentimes jokes are so hard to understand because native speakers use puns, they use, you know, this play on words. And that's why us non-native speakers, we struggle so much to understand jokes. This prompt is going to be perfect for you if you're bored of reading text in your target language. You can ask ChatGPT to create a short story based on your vocabulary. And I use this prompt very often. Let's say last week I learned, I don't know, 20 new words and I can save all of them and then I can ask ChatGPT to create a short story and include all all of these new words there so that I feel confident when I see these words because oftentimes what happens is we have a new word, we see it, we memorize it, but then we never use it and if we never use it, if we never see it, we forget it. <laughs> That's how it works. So by creating those short stories, you make it more interesting for yourself to read in your target language. And also you make yourself memorize this word a lot faster. Oh, one important thing here. I also specify my level. If I'm just starting, I don't want my text to be super advanced, right? So here, for example, in the prompt, I said, let's say I'm A1 in Spanish or A2, B1, B2, or I'm advanced in Spanish. I'm not sure how accurate ChatGPT is here, especially if you just use A1, A2, B1, B2. Maybe if you say I'm a beginner, I'm advanced, 
ChatGPT is gonna be more accurate here, but so far I've been using this prompt for a while and I really like it. For the final prompt, we need an additional Chrome extension. It's called Voice Control for ChatGPT. Everything that I'm mentioning in this video, everything that's connected to ChatGPT is completely free. The Chrome extension is free, all the prompts are also completely free. You don't need to upgrade and use a paid version. So what this extension does is it allows you to actually talk to ChatGPT because normally you can just type, you know, your prompts or like type in your inquiries. But now you can actually speak and this way you can do role plays. Again, for me, I have found it especially useful if I do a role play with the words that I have just learned. This way it's more effective because I want to make sure I know how to use these words in context. So again, we can ask ChatGPT to have this like role play, but use these words and maybe ask me questions. Let's say this prompt is about my family. So ask me questions about my parents, about my brother, about my sister, because I want to be able to have this conversation in real life too. So that's going to be it for this video. I have just shared eight amazing chat GPT prompts with you. I'm using all of them and I really, really like them. If you have tried using some of them in the past too, let me know in the comments. If you want to improve your skills and learn something new, make sure to give Skillshare a try. Skillshare helped me as a content creator a lot because there I learned how to edit my YouTube videos, for example. Well, in the past, before I had my amazing editor. The link will be in the description and in the pinned comment. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you in my next video.